So, Dr. Crane, I just don't know what to do about my weight. I've tried diet after diet, from the milkshakes three times a day to that scary bald-headed lady on TV. <laughs> Nothing seems to work. Hank, listen to me. You've got to look inside yourself. There is a part of you that isn't being fed. Well, it certainly isn't my butt. <laughs> yes, well, uh, I'm talking about your inner self. What isn't being fed there? Love? Career? Simple self-esteem? There are deeper issues at work here. So, so what do I do? Well, I'd suggest extended therapy. Please stay on the line, and my producer, Roz, will refer you to the help you need. Roz, who's our next call? We have someone on line one who disagrees with your advice to Hank. Oh, really? Hello, you're on the line. Congratulations, Fraser. you've done it again. <laughs> Let another unsuspecting innocent down one of your dark, dead-end Freudian hallways. Lilith? Overeating is very simply a behavioral problem caused by negative reinforcement. It can be cured quite readily by behavior modification. I see. Well, Seattle, we have a celebrity of sorts on the line. This is my ex-wife, Lilith. What do you mean by celebrity? Oh, they know you. <laughs> Ross, what exactly does call screening mean? It means I get to put on the air the calls I want to hear. Well, Lilith, what brings you to Seattle, the constant rain? I'm here for a convention, and I happen to hear your voice on the radio. I kept hoping you'd introduce Pearl Jam's latest hit, but much to my chagrin, you were doling out worthless little advice pellets from your psychiatric Pez dispenser. Well... I guess you'll be rushing off to your little convention now, and I suppose we'll just have to catch up on your next trip. Actually, I'm not doing anything for dinner tonight. Really? Well, then you'll want to keep your dial tuned to 780 for Gil Chesterton's restaurant beat. Why don't you ask her to dinner, Dr. Crane? What a wonderful idea. And let me tell you why, Seattle. You see, even though our marriage was unsuccessful, Lilith and I are quite capable of conducting ourselves as adults and even enjoying spending some time together from time to time. So, Lilith, seven at my place? Sounds great. <laughs> All right, now, now there she is. All right. Now, listen, it's just one evening out of your life. Will you at least try to be civil? All right, but I refuse to be warm. <laughs> Hello, Lilith. Frazier. Please come in. Uh... Yes. Hi. Uh... Here, let, let me take these things Thank for you. you. There we are. Yes. Oh, look who's here. <laughs> Hello, Martin. Hello, Niles. Hello. <laughs> Where's Maris? She's visiting her sister in Chicago. Oh. I thought perhaps she was sailing up the transplendent river of your love. <laughs> Fraser, I like what you've done with your apartment. Thank you. You have some beautiful things. The settlement is final, Lilith. <laughs> Go away. Well, why does he listen to you and not to me? By the tone of my voice, he senses I mean business. Oh, I see. You're saying your voice is more commanding than mine is? Hell, I took a half a step before I realized she was talking to the dog. Frazier, come in. I must be early. I see you haven't had a chance to put up your hair yet. Oh, I thought I'd leave it down tonight. Really? Yes, after several hours of careful deliberation and weighing all the consequences, I decided to be playful. Oh, my God. 
God. Fraser? Oh, my God! Liz, what are you doing here? I suppose I could ask you the same thing. Fraser, is everything all right? Uh, yes, yes, uh, why don't you come out and join us, Madeline? What about you? Are you here with someone? Yes, actually. He's snorkeling at the moment. Anyone I know? Sam Malone. Sam! <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, God! <laughs> it's nice to see you, too. Is Fraser here? Don't you live in Boston? I'm here on a layover. And judging by Fraser's trademark mangles on a stick, so are you. <laughs> Put down that mango, my dear. Time you tasted the forbidden fruit. <laughs> Lilith! What are you doing here? I have something urgent to discuss. What have you done with Madeline? She was surprised to see me, and she... I hope you're not angry with me. Angry? What do I have to be angry about? Just because every time I carve out the tiniest little slice of happiness for myself, you come along and obliterate it. My God, woman, I drive a stake through your heart, but I don't think anything could kill you. Does Frederick like him? Oh, he's crazy about him. Oh. Oh, Fraser. Brian could never take your place that way. You're Frederick's father. Congratulations. Well, it looks like they made up. Ah! <laughs> Hello, everyone. Lilith, what a pleasant surprise. Now, how is Bora Bora? <laughs> Never seen you looking quite so tan. God, what does she look like in winter? <laughs> Everyone, we have some very happy news. Lilith is going to be married again. To who? <laughs> Someone else. Oh, that's great! Congratulations! <laughs> Wonderful! <laughs> Just wonderful. When's the happy occasion? Uh, tomorrow in Las Vegas. Oh, Lilith, how delightfully kitschy. <laughs> It's your second marriage, so you've decided to poke fun at the institution by getting married in the tackiest place you could possibly choose. Brian's family lives in Las Vegas. Well, isn't that convenient? You'll have someone to show you the museums. I'm looking for Fraser Crane. They told me he'd be up here. L Lilith, it's me, Roz Doyle. Oh, yes, Fraser's fun loving producer, who's apparently having a bit too much fun loving. <laughs> you know, I'd love to send one back at you, but I gotta pee. <laughs> well, that's all the time we have for today. This is Dr. Fraser Crane wishing you a good day and good mental. Ah! <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, uh, someone just walked in the room and frightened me. I, it's uh, my ex-wife, so if you're a regular listener, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> we'll see you Monday. Oh. Huh. Oh, hello, Lilith. Surprise. Yes, we're a little past that now, aren't we? Well, <laughs> oh. what brings you to Seattle? I'm here for the National Conference on Self-Psychology. Ah, and how is Frederick? Fine. We have an amazing child. Yes, we have. <laughs> And, uh, Brian? Fine. 
I have an amazing husband. Yes, yes. And so did you two get the gift basket I sent you for the holidays? <laughs> what did you do to her? Nothing. I sent her a gift basket, fruits and festive nuts. <laughs> oh, it's not the basket you knit. It's Brian. He left me. Maybe I should go. Oh, no. Everyone else knows oh. it. You might as well know it, too. <clears throat> Brian was looking for someone a bit more feminine. And he found him. Hey, Niles. Good evening, Dad. Oh. Hello, Niles. Sherry, I think we have time before Lilith arrives. What? You never said she was coming up here. You just said you were going to dinner. You never said she was coming up here. <laughs> it's just to rendezvous. It's all of two minutes. But you never told me. I, you've been home an hour. You never told me. Not a word. Did he say anything to you? No, nothing. You could have told us, you know. We could have made plans to be elsewhere. Well, how come you didn't know about it? You just know these things. You just get a headache, don't you, for God's sake? I think you're supposed to... All right, to she's on. coming. Both of you, suck it up. <laughs> Lilith has had a devastating week. Her husband has left her. At least you can do a short little compassion, unless, of course, you'd like to go hide in your room. It's because two minutes of polite conversation with a woman in need is too much to ask. Out of my way! Me too! What is that? Remember, Fraser, I'm here for you if you feel yourself starting to weaken. I'm fine. Believe me. I'm in complete control. Oh, baby. Thank you, Fraser. I needed that. I treated myself to a little shopping this afternoon. Probably just a pathetic attempt to compensate for the battering my ego's taken recently. It's pretty transparent, huh? No, but if you're standing in the light, maybe Fraser. I could... Niles, sorry to hear your marriage ended in a shambles. Ditto. Now that we've got the pleasantries out of the way, let me take your rest. Oh, thank you. Yowza. <clears throat> oh, Lilith, that, that dress is stunning. Fraser, may I see you in the kitchen? No. <laughs> it's from a new couture line called Encore. Oh, well, uh, bravo. <laughs> I can almost feel the curtain rising. Fraser? I'll just ask him to leave. My God. My goddess. Room service. Go away. Well, I have your ketchup, ma'am. Not necessary. OK, but I need the bill. Later. Well, let's just take care of this. <laughs> I'm sorry to disturb you. Here's the uh, ketchup. <laughs> sorry it took so long. Ah, uh, I still need the bill. Where's the cart? In the bathroom. Why is the breakfast cart in the bathroom? Uh, I was going to take a hot bath while I ate. Still, food in the bathroom. Be right back. Hi, Dad. Frederick. Hi. Hello, Fraser. <laughs> Hello. Oh, gosh, you know, I was starting to get worried about you. You're an hour late. We saw a big accident on the freeway. Mom saved this guy's life. Really? Well, that's going a bit far. I simply applied a tourniquet. She's a hero. Yes, that's your mother all right, son. Yeah. <laughs> and then the paramedics came and wanted to give Mom a transfusion. Yes, that's your mother all right, son. <laughs> it's not your turn yet. I still have two more lives. It's Lilith. Ah! I need to talk to you. Does the door have to be closed? I think it's best. It's of a personal nature. What's this about? Well, it's about an attraction that I thought was over, and now I'm beginning to think maybe it's not. Usually in my dreams, this is where I try to run and can't. <laughs> this isn't about you, you egomaniac. This is about Fraser. I think he wants us together again. He knows how I feel about you. Not me and Frasier. Is there a chair here I could talk to? Hi, it's me, Frasier. Uh, listen, I'm aware of the time. It's just that 
Well, you're the last person on earth I thought I'd be calling, but I, I had this dream and I had to talk to you about it. Oh, God. I suppose you expect me to be awake for this conversation, don't you? Okay, I'll be brief. Hello? Yes, hi, Niles. Listen, I'm fine, actually. I, I just need a little time alone. Yes, I'll, I'll see you in a day or two. No, there's no need to put Dad on. He's already consoled me enough as it is. Every time I can't make it work with a woman. What the hell does he know? He's not wrong, Fraser. Yes, he is. It wasn't that I couldn't make it work with Lana. I simply stepped aside when the father of her children showed up, like the decent human being I am. And, speaking on behalf of your subconscious, because you realized the relationship was destined to fail. And why would that be? Lana could have been perfect for him. Is that something you just say out of habit now? No. Because two weeks ago, the title belonged to Claire. Claire was perfect. I just wasn't in love with her. The heart has a mind of its own, they say. Or perhaps she wasn't needy enough for you. You have been known to love a project. Oh, please. I have never found neediness to be an attractive quality in a woman. Never? <laughs> Solitude. This is what I needed. Perhaps. But to quote Lord Byron, it is in solitude where we are least alone. It smells like dirt out there. Whoa. <laughs> Why do you need you to hang around? He's making lunch for Lilith. And off we go. <laughs> Too late. Shouldn't you get the door? You're closer. I don't live here. Doesn't matter, your family. So is that. Oh, no, no, no. Maybe if you slid me a key, I could let myself in. Hey, Lola. Sorry for the holdup, but uh, Frazier should be back from the dentist any minute. Oh, all right. That'll give us a chance to visit. Yeah. <laughs> Daphne, Niles, congratulations on the successful commingling of your genetic material. You asked me that staging of Torrendot was a Torrendot. <laughs> well, I still say it was a refreshingly modern adaptation of a classic work. Refreshingly modern? Good Lord, they, they changed the Imperial Palace to a Costco and Chicopee. <laughs> That's odd. Frederick told me he had plans this evening when I invited him to the opera. I didn't realize it was a date. Oh, I was a Bangkok choice, was I? Fine. I'll just write that in our friendship ledger. In red. <laughs> A sly dog, he clearly traded up. <laughs> Dished his old man for an evening with an enchanting ingenue. Let's go say hello. <laughs> Frederick, you old dog, you, who is this lovely serpent? Hello, Fraser. Lilith, dear God, <laughs> who looked in the mirror and said your name three times? <laughs> Fraser, I almost didn't recognize you. I'm used to seeing you wedged between commercials for injury attorneys and walk-in tubs. I'm just joking, I've never seen your television show. <laughs> it's good to see you, but if you're here, then who's minding the children you've lured to your gingerbread house? Okay, you crazy kids. Wonderful to see you again, Lilith. I know it's been ages, but I trust the venerable tree of our friendship will bear sweet fruit once again. Who are you? <laughs> There's the rapier-like wit. <laughs> On guard. <laughs> Seriously, who are you? Alan. Alan Cornwall. Corny. Le petit cornichon. <laughs> Fraser's best friend. I gave a toast at your wedding in Aruba. I wore a white linen suit and you told me that I looked terrible in a fedora. You'll have to be more specific. I say that to everyone in a fedora. Alan, why don't you get us a couple of drinks? Uh, Freddy, why didn't you tell me you were having dinner with your mother? Uh, I'd like to cede my time to Alan. Oh, splendid. So, Lilith. No. 